we're off on an overnighter. So we've decided that we can't go on our normal adventure. So what we've done is we've left our house, coming down the field, and we're going to pick up a few small little footpaths that run just across the fields here. So very sort of uh, quiet footpaths, so we shouldn't see anybody on our trail. And then we're going to do a little circuit, and then come back and set up the camp in our in our field, so we can have an overnighter without breaking any curfews so it's going to be a bit of fun really like our, we often walk on the footpaths around here but we've never done this sort of reverse trip for an overnight camp no, so it's going to be fun. we have done a lot of overnighters in a garden testing out the stuff <laughs> yeah that's it any any <laughs> excuse really isn't it yeah. so yeah you don't have to go far to have a little mini adventure really So decided to offload the tent now, so leave it where we're going to pitch it on our return leg and we're going to pitch it where we built our sweat lodge the other day. So it's a really nice flat little patch of ground down here. So this magnificent oak tree that's like been pollarded a few hundred years ago, I don't know how old it is, but the base of it's probably about 12 foot diameter where the roots are, maybe even bigger. But uh, yeah, I've been coming and playing in this tree since I was about four years old. Um, me and my mates, we'd climb up there. It's like a natural tree house. Never actually slept in it. So maybe that's one thing that I've got to try and do before I get much older. But yeah, fantastic memories in this, in this oak tree. So here it is actually up in the tree, so it's actually quite a sizeable area, so you'd get a few of you sat around in different places, so yeah, used to spend lots of time up in this tree, and uh, it's just beautiful really. Let's turn it around and we'll see if we can see where Lois is. Hello up there! <laughs> and what's a great thing about the oak tree itself, is obviously you've got all these different habitats, and we've actually got a little elder an elderberry tree growing actually in the oak tree itself. We're walking up a small hill, not our usual usual walk up the Morvans because that's too far away, that's four miles away, that's not on our doorstep. So this nice little hill we're going up does reveal a really nice view on the other side over towards Ledbury so it's something we don't do all that often because we're always heading somewhere more spectacular, but this is still rather nice. So this magnificent old hedge line of ash and oak are on the opposite side of the valley from us. And in the winter months, when the sun's setting a bit earlier and lower in the sky, these give us an amazing sunset with this silhouette against that, that backdrop. So we're on the other side of that hedgerow now with those big oaks in and you can probably see the Malvern Hills in the distance. That's where we'd normally be up on the ridge if we get any time off. But uh, yeah, just see what's on your doorstep, you know. It's amazing what you can find and some funny little paths that you might not have even tried before. If they're on your doorstep, yeah, give them a test run. Well, uh, we've come at least a mile from our home, so of course it's time for a brew. <laughs> Behind me you can see this amazing red Herefordshire soil, freshly tilled. It's unusual. I think you get this soil, a little strip of it that runs from here down into Devon, but it's an amazing colour. I'm just picking some little hawthorn leaves to make a little fresh infusion for me. Ben sticking with the hot chocolate.
just heading into the woods and notice down here got a bit of jack by the hedge or hedge garlic so this can be used as another seasoning when you're doing some wild cooking yeah really nice here's some deer prints running through the woods maybe we'll see some tonight going past our tent maybe so we've got some clematis here or old man's beard as I used to call it when I was a kid and what's great is if you get an old bit like this you can sort of take some of that outer bark off it and that makes really good tinder so you don't have to snap the whole vine you can just shred some of that that dead outer layer off it and take that and you can sort of buff that up against the tree and it gets really fibrous and it's a good tinder so we'll gather some of that for later Wooden enemies with the bluebells coming up in between, ready for May. It's an absolute mass of wild garlic here. So plenty of ingredients for your nettle and wild garlic soup, which we can highly recommend. Very tasty. Here's some of those young ash up close. Really beautiful straight grain bit of timber in that one. That makes some fantastic chair legs or rounders bats. Yeah, beautiful. So we're back down to the little lane. Uh, the only traffic that's been on it today is one tractor. Um, so we're going to wander down there and then back across the field back to our place. So we've made it back round and the tent was where we left it, which was always good. <laughs> so now we're going to try and figure out the best spot to pitch it. So we got the tent up. I got confused with our old tent, so I was pitching it long ways uh, instead of sideways. So anyway, we spun it round and hopefully we've got it up. So we actually swapped tents. The first tent that we had was a really, really small supernova. And then we ended up upgrading to this one, which is an MSR Hubber. It's a Hubber 2 in it, Lois. Hubber 2, I think it is. Because when we were on the coast path and it was not really raining, but it was raining enough and we had nowhere to store our rucksacks basically because the tent was so small. We went so ultra lightweight that it was a bit crazy really. So the great thing about this one is it's got a porch. So I'll, I'll show you how that looks inside. So yeah, in this one, you've got this massive porch with somewhere to sit you on. It's got this built-in sort of little ground sheet on in the porch area. So you've got somewhere to store your rucksack if it's really bad weather, you've got somewhere that you can at least have a brew up and things like that. And you've got a sort of removable inner on this one as well. So worst case scenario, the weather's really rubbish. You can just throw up the outer pretty quick, hopefully quicker than what we've just done it. And then put the inner up at your leisure really. So yeah, pretty impressive bit of kit. Um, nice and lightweight. I think, it's a, I think it's about another 900 to a kilo more than our old one. But uh, yeah, really nice features. So we've got the tent up and we've got the kit mats inflated, the thermo rests inflated and we've got the sleeping, sleeping bags, bags out. These lovely sleeping bags. It's going to be cosy tonight. So we did buy, again, same scenario, bought some really lightweight, I think they were three seasons or were they two seasons? Two seasons. Two yeah. seasons sleeping bags for the trail. But every time we ended up actually getting on the coast path, it was normally either early in the year or late in the year, never in the summer. So we bought some more winter style uh, sleeping bags so these should be toasty and even though it's warm during the day now last night we had a frost mm. so i presume we'll get another frost tonight so we brought our winter bags with us 
I've got my famous mixture of cattails and birch bark. <laughs> You've got your... I've got my uh, old man's beard, clematis, that we found on the trail, so we'll buff that up a little bit. And pop that on top. Right. You're going to do the honours, are you? I'll do it, yeah, if you like. Okay. Temperature's really dripping it's fast un- down here. It's it? unbelievable, isn't it? So, we'll fire a few sparks into the uh, cattail. Let's not, not make sure I don't knock that off. So, shave a few bits of the fire steel in first. Ooh. It's funny with that cattail, sometimes when it's so sort of densely packed you have to almost fluff it up a bit more there you go as soon as it catches that birch bark we're away okay. then we've got some last year's nettle stems Should you put on yeah you happy with my recipe yeah go for it and there's a bit of hawthorn in me that's a watch out a few spiky bits so we want to make some nice hot coals, so we've got a mixture of uh, dead hazel by the look of it. Yep. What else have you foraged for, Lois? A bit of dead hawthorn. hawthorn. There's a little bit of dead elder in here, it's a bit tacky, but it'll probably help a little bit. It's cool. Dry. So yeah, we'll get some nice embers and then we can start using the fire. We're not going to use a pan and do a bit of backwards cooking. So we're going to need a stick for what we're going to cook tonight, so I'm going to cut a nice live hazel stick out of the hedgerow. So there's a nice one there. I think we should get enough for both of us out of that one. Take those side shoots off here. I'm gonna thin this one that's a little bit thick on the tip down a little bit. And then what I would suggest is to make it clean, take the bark off. So you could just shave it off with your knife, but it's probably easier just to use the back edge of your knife, just to scrape like that. Comes off pretty easy. And any algae or any dirt that's on the outside of the, the stick comes off with the bark. So you're left with a nice clean stem that we can use for, for our cooking. Could even save all these little curly shavings and uh, when they dry out they're pretty good tinder as well. Right. So for dinner tonight we have twist mix which is basically um, plain flour, which I added some uh, baking powder to, to make it self-raising, and a little bit of salt. We're gonna mix that with some water, and then uh, make it into a dough and twist it around the sticks that Ben's prepared, cook that over the fire, and then add some nice jam on the top of it. This is some of our homemade damson jam from last year. And then for afters, it is bananas cooked over the fire, with some brown sugar and a little something out of Ben's hip flask poured on top. You know you've done it right when you've got a nice clean bowl at the end of it. So I probably haven't had twists for probably at least 10 years or more I should imagine. But yeah I used to live off these when I was a kid because it was simple ingredients that you could rob out the uh, cupboard without anybody really noticing. And uh, yeah it was always easy to cook over a campfire. So get a sort of hand sized ball of dough and then what we want to try and do is roll it fairly thin this is where it's a bit awkward and you end up with more grass in it than anything else if you're not careful and then with our freshly prepared hazel sticks 
we can start to attach it to the to the stick so start at the top it's always a little bit tricky to get it to start you have to sort of stick it together at the top and then we can start to bring it round the stick now some people say that you should leave a gap for expansion I think they're being a bit optimistic on how much this actually rises so I normally just stick it together it stays on a little bit easier and it stops it spinning around the stick as well so you can sort of stretch it as you go and keep wrapping it around try and make it roughly the same thickness because otherwise you'll end up with bits that are cooked and bits that are raw but that's looking that's looking about right just like so make sure that's stuck onto the stick and then you want embers really you don't want to cook this over the flames because all you end up with is like a sooty sooty bit of uh, dough so stick it over there and start to let it cook a little bit gently you can rake a few of those embers a little bit closer and the temptation is to cook it fast but because everybody's always hungry but the slower you cook it the better really and obviously as the one side cooks we'll just start turning it round that's looking pretty good Lois there we go lovely so mine's looking pretty pretty good some people would say that that's burnt I think that's done to perfection um, and basically to test it you just want to give it a bit of a tap if it's still a bit gooey which it is a little bit on the ends where it's not had much heat but these bits are feeling pretty pretty good so I'm actually gonna break a bit off and and give it a test run so it's nice and crispy on the outside and it's pretty much well that's pretty that I don't think I ever had baking powder in mine as a kid they were never as fluffy as that wow that tastes pretty good Wow. Mm. Ah. Mm. That's really risen, isn't it? <laughs> so while the twists are cooking, we'll prepare the bananas. They take a little, a little bit longer to cook anyway. So carefully, with your knife, just open up the inner part of that curve of the banana. And it's important to do it that way up otherwise everything falls out you don't really need to cut too much into the banana because the banana itself is going to be pretty soft <clears throat> and you can use chocolate buttons chocolate bar kit kat whatever you've got to hand but what lois has prepared is a mixture of brown sugar and cinnamon and we're going to put a little bit of uh, spiced rum in there at the end but we'll let the uh, let the banana soften and the sugar melt so I think Lois has put this in a recycled birthday card wrapping paper which is giving it its second use and it's quite handy for putting your your items that you want to take cooking down the field that you don't want to spill in your bag so recycled birthday card I like it so we'll tip that in and it's important that we cut them on that plane because obviously they'll sit up in the in the embers nicely then. So they can go in there. So they're already starting to bubble nicely, bananas. So we've dragged the bananas to the side of the fire. I don't think we'd actually be able to pick them up because they've gone so squidgy. But these little carry handles are pretty good, so we'll drag them out. And I'm going to just add a little bit of spiced rum into the little banana boats. Wow, that is still hot by that fire. Wow, that is good. That is really good. Oh, wow. Couldn't it? That's got a kick. I wasn't too frugal with the rum. <laughs> I think that makes a real nice little yeah. addition. So have you had a good day? Fantastic day, beautiful sunny afternoon. Certainly enjoyed uh, doing a bit of outdoor cooking. Um, so yeah, I can't I don't think you can beat it really, can you? Yeah, it's great fun. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed seeing what we've been cooking. 
and uh, yeah, tune in in the morning and see if we've survived the night. <laughs> So we got up, the birds woke us up with an incredible dawn chorus, but we did manage to get our sort of heads back down for another hour or so. So we just got up, kettle's boiling for the first cup of tea, if I can find out how to turn it off. Lois has got the fire going, ready for the breakfast. So all in all, it was a pretty successful night. Really nice and warm in the sleeping bags. There was no frost, it actually clouded over a little bit, so kind of pleased about that in a way. But yeah, really nice night. Oh yeah, cheers. I like a nice cup of tea. So it's time for breakfast. Um, I've made up a little bit of sort of instant porridge. And by that I mean I've got some oats mixed with skimmed milk and some sultanas in there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so then we're just going to add water to it and pop it on the fire. Again, a plastic bag that's been reused we both agreed last night about 30 times, so uh, we're quite proud of that one. Put it on the fire. You can see yesterday's last twist being cooked. But I'm going to nick the flame now and put the pan on there. Nice. So I just spotted one of my favourite little flowers that grows down here. So this is cuckoo flower or ladies smock. This beautiful delicate little purpley flower that just popped through this time of the year. Obviously called cuckoo flower because they sort of come into flower when you start hearing the cuckoos but I kind of imagined I heard one in the in the night but I, I think that must have been my mind playing tricks on me. But a yeah, lovely little lovely little flower we're all packed up and ready to go usually when we're on the trail it's a leave no trace policy but we're going to come back down tonight so we're going to leave the fire pit and leave the tent here yeah it's such a nice morning waking up here in that dawn chorus and you get this lovely early morning sunlight coming through so yeah. we've decided to leave the tent up it'll obviously dry it out during the day and then we can come back down here this evening uh, also wandering down at night is quite nice because you can see what other wildlife that you might have missed the night before so we've certainly seen a few tracks on the way down yesterday so hopefully we might even be able to see some of those those deer that are wandering through or some badgers so uh, yeah we'll come back down later yeah great but uh, yeah thanks for watching hope you enjoyed seeing our little recipes of what we were cooking obviously if you haven't got access to the sort of great outdoors you could still cook that kind of uh, twist bread and things like that on your barbecue in your garden or even if you can't get out into the garden you could even do it in your conventional oven in your kitchen so hope it's given you a few pointers and uh, yeah hope you enjoyed our little mini adventure